Welcome to our weekly maritime vlog. I'm Corey Ranslam with International Maritime Security Associates. This week, we're hacking the bridge systems. Before we jump into our topic, which we're gonna be talking about hacking bridge computer and navigation systems, we have our news of the day, a couple of items that we've pulled off the internet uh, that we thought were pretty interesting news. Uh, first, um, and this is reported to us by our friends over at Freight Waves, a great publication as far as digital online. Uh, if you're not a subscriber and you're in the maritime and logistics industry, a uh, phenomenal publication that keeps uh, up to date on news and information happening in international shipping and transportation logistics here in the United States. Anyway, they um, had a story in, um, on their site about spikes in the reefer rates in Miami for trucks that transport uh, fresh produce uh, because of a spike for the ordering of Mother's Day flowers. As you know, here in the United States, most of our flowers come from Ecuador and Colombia. So as those get shipped into Miami, um, the reefer trucks that are normally doing fresh fruits and vegetables are now being overtasked because of such a high demand around Mother's Day for flowers. So with that, the rates have spiked on reefer trucks. So fairly interesting. Uh, the other interesting story that we found is um, as the search continues in the southern Indian Ocean off the coast of Australia, and we mean way off the coast of Aust Australia, for Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, uh, there's been a couple of shipwrecks that have been found dated back to the 19th century. I thought this was pretty interesting. This was about 2,300 kilometers off the west coast of uh, Australia where they found these ships, and they were apparently they think dated back to at least the 19th century and they appear to be ships that were transporting coal. So ships involved in trade. And our third item is gonna take us into today's topic. Third item and the news side that we have is the US Coast Guard. And this has been happening since about mid-March of 2018 of this year. The Coast Guard has received a number of reports from vessels and aircraft that are operating in the Eastern Mediterranean region of anomalies happening happening with the GPS system. Um, I've actually seen a number of reports of this happening, and sometimes you can even catch this um, if you're on marine traffic or one of the AIS traffic uh, tracking sites where you can actually see this uh, sometimes when it happens when ship positions move abruptly. So fairly interesting uh, when it comes to the, the GPS interference, most likely that's coming uh, through a state actor. So today, we're going to be talking about that on the blog, a little bit about hacking the bridge system. So there's a number of ways that hackers can gain access to important navigation systems on the bridge. Number one in the story that we just talked about is through the tampering with GPS signals. Now, most state actors and some hackers at a higher level are able to penetrate the GPS satellite system and actually impose anomalies into the software, which causes issues on the, on the ground, on the water and in the air and puts a ship or an aircraft or a car or a person in a position where they're not because of issues that have been injected into the satellites. There are also easier ways to be able to spoof the GPS system. And we're not gonna get into great detail here. This, this vlog is not really a technical vlog, but more to give you kind of an idea of some of the things that are happening. From the standpoint of GPS, you can also spoof a GPS receiver if you're in close enough proximity to that receiver because a number of, of things that happen with the GPS receiver are not encrypted. So there's a way locally when you're within a certain distance of a vessel or a vehicle or that GPS receiver where you can spoof that receiver locally and that's a lot easier to do than to go in and to spoof the satellite. So the, the first point of entry into a system is actually messing with the GPS system, uh, whether it's satellites or locally, to introduce anomalies. The other way that we thought was really interesting when we talk about hacking is the ease of penetration in some instances, and now this isn't an across the board statement, but in some instances with some VSAT providers, um, it's easy to be able to go in and gain control of a vessel's 
uh, navigation system of critical operations and IT infrastructure technology through the VSAT. Um, there was an article that was put out on Mashable.com, uh, pretty interesting website that talks about different types of technology. We'll definitely have a link to that article uh, down below. Like I said, it came out about a year ago, uh, July of 2017, where they talked about how easy it was to gain access through a vessel's VSAT system um, actually into the vessel system. So to give a little bit of history is there's a website called Shodan. This website has been around for a long time and the purpose of the site and really the platform is it was set up to search out the internet for IoT devices or the Internet of Things devices that are connected into the internet from an unsecure standpoint. So a great example of that is there was a temperature control and monitoring system that was controlling the temperature and monitoring the temperature of a fish tank in a very large casino. We're not going to get into too much detail. You could probably search and find the article. Hackers were able to gain access to critical network systems by hacking into the fish tank's temperature control and monitoring system and download gigabytes of data of their large um, user uh, database, uh, the database that they had of very high level customers and were able to download all of this data through a temperature control system on a fish tank. So that device would be considered an IoT device. So as this website searches out unsecure IoT, IoT devices, one of the things that they've been able to do through this website is now search out for unsecured IoT devices, i.e. the VSAT systems connected into the internet that are unsecure. There's a whole site that they have where you can actually go on and track vessels. The site's a little finicky, it's not always operational, and you can't always see a ton of data, but it's pretty interesting to see that through this website uh, that you can see and track vessels um, through the VSAT. Also through this, what the researchers and the hackers found is that the IPv4 addresses for the satellite VSAT for the basically the box were in the open in front of a firewall. So once you gained access, you could get the addresses and then through there gain access into the shipboard systems. And the reason that this was possible is because a number of users of the VSAT systems were not resetting the administrative and user level password and credentials that came with the, the VSAT system when they got it. So one of the fixes for this is, is any device that you get that's going to be connected to the internet, you need to make sure that that device is secure and make sure that you always change the usernames and passwords for those devices and make sure the passwords are long and are difficult so that someone can't potentially gain control of that. There's a number of other things you can do when you can get into the bifurcation of your networks from the same internet signal. You can bifurcate networks so you have one network on board specifically for navigation. You could have one network on board for operational critical items that you have and then another network for crew and guests so that devices could connect into that network and not affect the other networks. So there's a number of things and there's a number of great experts out there to really help with that. But these vulnerabilities, I believe, are just the tip of the iceberg and the beginning for what we're going to see as continued persistent threats to different vessels and facilities in the maritime industry. Hey, thanks for joining us this week on the vlog. We really appreciate all the viewers we have. We really especially appreciate when you guys reach out to us with comments or encouragement or critiques, whatever that may be, or if you have ideas of other topics you'd like us to like to see us cover on the vlog, don't hesitate to reach out to us through our email address, our company website, or our social media, which is detailed in the banner above and also in the comments section below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you get notified when we post new videos. Also, hit that like button for all the videos you like. If there's anything that we can do for you from a company perspective, whether it's maritime regulatory compliance, maritime security, or maritime risk management, don't ever hesitate to reach out to us because we're always happy to steer you in the right direction.